England lose to South Africa, meaning that they have to beat USA on Sunday. Hello again and welcome back to another video. Um, just finished watching South Africa beat England by seven runs. Gotta say, overall, South Africa are probably just the better team. They cope better with conditions. Um, this game was held at the Darren Sammy Stadium uh, in St. Lucia. So the second game for England, South Africa, South Africa flew in. First time they played there, I think they go back to Antigua, whereas England go back to um, Barbados for their game against USA on Sunday. I'll, I'll just call out before we get into the game and the teams, etc. Um, the, the the crowd at um, the Darren Sammy Stadium today was, it seemed like next to nobody had turned up. So what's going on there? Why aren't more locals in the game? Um, why haven't the England fans travelled? They're only a, a, a handful. Uh, and, and where were the South African fans as well? So that that's quite disappointing. Give the tickets away let the local people enjoy the world cup in in their hometown in their city their country give them the tickets and get the locals and the kids in and just create a bit of an atmosphere do something about it please okay mini rant over but i think you i think i've got a fair point let's look at the teams so this was the england starting 11 missing out again today will jacks tom hartley ben duckett and chris jordan i will be surprised if tom hartley um, bowls a single ball in this tournament um, unchanged side so fairly straightforward England fans do you feel that we needed to change this up at all we beat West Indies convincingly so was it right to keep the same 11 or would you have changed anything let me know the South African team also had a very familiar feel to it South African fans again same question would you have gone with this 11 could you have strengthened it in any way let me know. Okay, so Joss Butler won the toss and elected to bowl first. Let's just take a look at the scorecard. Right, so South Africa batted first. Um, 163 felt sort of not that not that short. They, I could think they kind of said it was a, a par score. I, I think they'd have wanted maybe another 10 or 15 runs and that would have been plenty. Um, it turned out to be close in the end, but um, yeah, just perhaps a little bit under par. De Kock and Miller seem to be the only South African batsmen. Of course, they were the two top scorers, but clearly they were the only two that got to grips with the sort of pace. There was some chat on the TV as, as I was watching it, and, and even uh, Quinton de Kock said in his post-match interview that the wicket there at St. Lucia plays differently um, in the evening compared to the day. So they had expected sort of a little bit, um, a little bit difference there, but. Ultimately, de Kock scored 65 off 38 and, and ended up being my man of the match. I believe he was Sky's man of the match as well. It was between him and, and, and Brooke, who we'll come on to in a, in a, in a second. But uh, yeah, de Kock played really well and Miller supported that with an equal, equally sort of um, high strike rate. And he ended up with 43 off 28. Nobody really, every, you know, the other batsmen scratched around a little bit, but nothing of, uh, of, nothing of significance. So regarding the England bowlers... Again, I'm probably going to sound like a scratch record, but Adil Rashid again performed at the elite level. Um, one for 20 from his four overs. His wicket was a little bit lucky. I think it was Aidan Markram who, who, who played on um, from for a, a ball that wasn't going to hit the wickets. But ultimately, again, just showed he is a master of his, uh, his trade right now. Moeen got one for 25 off three. Didn't complete his four. Archer did. He went for 21 off his four his first over um, but then managed to pull it back with uh, his um, overs 2, 3 and 4 just going for another 19 runs which I thought was a good uh, a good turnaround for him Reese Topley didn't make the summary he bowled economically in the power play didn't really look threatening Sam Curran likewise he mixes it up manages to keep the, the runs down um, you know a, a little bit uh, and thank goodness Liam Livingstone didn't bowl so then it was England's turn to bat and um, Butler and Butler, should I say, and Salt didn't really do much. The only two England batsmen worth worth um, mentioning today were Brooke, who I thought hit a brilliant 53 of 37, almost got us over the line. Um, 
handled the pressure and situation really, really well and supported by Liam Livingston who hit 33 of 17. So well done you two. Ultimately we fell seven runs short and that was plenty down to the South African bowlers. Nokia took one for 35. That was uh, to end Brooke, um, who um, Aidan Markran took one of those running, diving over the shoulder catches to get rid of Brooke. Rabada, who was, was a class act and, and very consistent, got two for 32 off his four. And Maharaja offered something different, also got two for 25 off four. So really good um, a, a bowling attack today. I should also mention that Bartman, not that Bartman, also got a wicket. But um, ultimately, in his third over, decided just to to bowl full bungers, and he got taken uh, to the cleaners by by Livingston. So he didn't make the top three, but um, yeah, Bartman. So just to confirm, South Africa did win by seven runs. Um, my man of match was Quinton de Kock. It was between him and Brooke, like I said earlier. But uh, ultimately, Quinton, win, uh, winning captain put the runs on the board, early doors, and um, he had the added pressure of figuring out what the wicket was going to do as well. So, yeah, well done, Quinny. So let's just take a quick look at the Group B table. As you can see now, South Africa being one of three unbeaten teams, along with Australia and India, having won the first two games in Group B, go to the top of the table with four points to make their uh, net run rate a little bit better. England's net run rate dropped slightly, but still positive as we drop down to second. I think West Indies will will move into second um, in the hours, sorry, in the early hours of tomorrow morning as uh, they'll probably beat USA quite convincingly. But then we get to do the same on Sunday. So I actually think that England will qualify second uh, and I think it will be on net run rate putting West Indies into third, even if they beat South Africa. And just to confirm that England fly over to Barbados to play at the Kensington Oval for their match against USA on Sunday. So that's me done for another one. We know we've definitely got one more England game to go. Maybe two, hopefully three. If you like this video, leave me a like. If you've got time, leave me a comment. But as always, if you love cricket as much as I do, smash that subscribe button for a six. But as always, and more importantly than cricket, stay healthy. I'll see you soon.